How's it going everybody? Welcome to K6 Outdoors. My name is Kyle. Today I want to discuss the engine block heater on the Mahindra Max 26 XLT. I keep my tractor in a 45 degree shop, so generally I don't use mine. Could it benefit from using one? I'm not quite sure honestly what this the engine block heater will even get the, the block to here. So um, I have plugged in a couple of times just to see how it will work, let it sit 20-30 minutes and then fire it off. And I don't notice a ton of performance difference in the winter. Again, the block should be 45 degrees. It's sitting inside a 45 degree shop. And, um, you know, that's cool. You know, diesel engines like, you know, nice warm temperatures to, to work well. And um, maybe it would be better off if I did let it sit there and work for 20 minutes or so before starting it up and, and pulling it outside. I mean, obviously, you know, things at a better operating temperature, there's gonna be less wear and things like that. But so far, um, I really haven't used it. So, Again, I'm gonna get you guys down here, show you where my engine block heater is located, kind of how it's set up. I don't know specifically which brand it is because it was installed before I bought the tractor. Um, and this is something that the dealer does here in our area in Iowa because you know our tractors are exposed to cold weather usually and um, not always really sitting inside. So they recognize the fact that it is um, a cold environment and diesel engines need heat to run well. Not saying I wouldn't start without it, but a, a warm diesel engine is less likely to have, um, I guess, unplanned wear and is more conducive to lasting longer. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna stop talking. We'll take a look here at where it's at. Um, and the testing we're gonna do is I'm gonna do some surface temperature readings on the block with the uh, infrared heat gun. Uh, sitting there with no, nothing plugged in. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, take, a, take the uh, block heater and plug it in for 20 or 30 minutes. And then get a block temp on to see what, uh, what are we sitting at. Again, the ambient temperature in about 45 degrees. So I'll be curious to see what the uh, block heater gets it to. Um, before we go. So let's go ahead and take a look at the setup I have on my Mahindra Max 26 XLT. All right, so let's take a gander and see how mine is set up. On the left side of the tractor, um, you will see down in here a little red plug sticking on the side of the block, right there, if you don't see it. That is my black heater on this tractor. Basically what they did, you see back here behind it, right here, there is another um, frost plug. They pulled the frost plug out over here. Obviously there's a hole there in the casting for the brackets and that's how it's mounted. It's ran out here a couple of wires to a connector right here if you can see it and then they've wired in the connector down here to a regular old 120 volt plug. So that's how mine's set up. So just for reference I did locate the block here that is on my tractor. Um, I went to Bill's tractor and equipment which is at billstractor.net. I have no affiliation with these guys, no sponsorship, but this is a website I like to use to reference to find filters and such like that so I can cross-reference things and they get an idea what stuff's gonna cost. Um, obviously, you can reach out to your local dealer. They'll be able to help you out. If not, then I'm sure they can point you in the right direction. Um, so if you go up here to Mahindra, um, my specific tractor is, again, the Max 26 XLT. Um, if you go to page four, which is the last page, I've already found it earlier, um, you'll find the block here for Mahindra Tractor. It's 196700500. Says it's five hundred and sixty dollars and thirty odd pennies. It's marked off from six hundred bucks. It's kind of an expensive block heater. Um, but you'll see here a bigger picture. It gives you the plug that I have on mine, um, the grounding plug, and then the actual uh, block heater itself. This specific one goes in where the frost plug is, like we talked about earlier. Also gives you the instructions showing you how to remove the core. Um, by sticking you know, a screwdriver in it, working it back out. And this specific block heater has a spot that it bolts right into the, into the uh, block like I showed you before on the tractor. So this one gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it, um, the part numbers themselves, and maybe you can do some cross-referencing yourself to find something a little bit different. Um, but this looks like it's pretty universal across at least all of the small Mahindra tractors, um, a little bit bigger, a couple of bigger series in the 3000 series, but most of them are pretty small. And this is what they had. So again, just want to show you guys so you knew what I had in my tractor. And it looks like this is specifically what they were using. Um, I don't know what they paid for it. And maybe you can get it cheaper locally. And maybe this is an inflated price. But even 560 bucks, you know, if you're storing a tractor outside and this is a peace of mind to keep things from freezing, it may be worth the money. And, you know, at least here in Iowa, when we're using something in the cold, at least around my house, we're probably pushing snow, doing chores, whatever it may be. And uh, not having a tractor start is not really an option. So... Good option here, 560 bucks, maybe a little steep for some people, 
but it's also a good way to keep your engine warm if you're worried about that. If anybody's installed one of these block heaters themselves, I'd appreciate you guys giving me feedback down below on how hard it was to do or maybe what parts you did use. Because I know some of the people that watch these videos like to do some of this stuff themselves because again, that's not super difficult to do if you've got the right know-how. Um, again, this video is not a, a how to install a block heater. I want to show you where it's located and basically see some performance differences in the um, block temp with or without working. So. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna get some temperature readings here on the block itself to see where it's sitting at. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in, let it run for 20, 30 minutes, and um, probably closer to 30 minutes to give, uh, give it some time to warm up. And then we'll take some more measurements and see where we're at. All right, let's go ahead and check it with the old digital thermometer here and see what we come up with. So the block is right now about 41 and a half degrees, 42 degrees, depending upon where you check it at. Again, it's about 45 degrees in the shop, so this shouldn't be too far off from that. Let's go ahead and uh, plug in the block heater, let it sit for 25, 30 minutes or so, see what the block temperature reads on both sides, and we will go from there. We got the juice plugged in the wall and ran over here and plugged in the old block heater. Again, let's go ahead and let it sit for 25 minutes or so, and then we'll get a temp again on the block on both sides and see where we're at. I'm, I don't know, I guess I don't know what it's supposed to get up to. Um, and while we're waiting for that to warm up, I want to show you guys a couple of things here in the owner's manual to talk about the cold temperature operation. Um, obviously, there's various different things you want to talk about on a tractor, and really one of the biggest things you're going to talk about is fuel. You want to keep it clean with no water in it. Um, obviously, you want to check to make sure your engine oil has the right, correct viscosity in it. But uh, one thing I want to make sure you point out to you, because people always talk about, you know, just these cylinders are meant to start when it's cold, just rev up to the RPMs, don't let it warm up. Even here in the operating manual, it does tell you here, you know, obviously um, during cold ambient temperatures, you don't want the engine to idle at low speeds because it's not going to get to an operating temperature. Diesels don't burn super hot, which is why they have a hard time warming up anyways. Um, but just talking about through here, really the biggest piece you want to pick out, you want to get the engine and transmission to a warmer temperature. So again, plugging it into the block heater is going to help. Um, but again, running the engine at 1500 RPMs for about five minutes, get some heat up in the oil so you can keep things lubricated. The cold uh, transmission can cause some problems and not run smoothly. You don't want any engine damage or any transmission damage. Um, and really the biggest piece here is if you're going to let it idle, never let it idle below 1500 RPM. It's not going to maintain operating conditions. And here it does talk about putting a cover in front of the grill to help control the amount of air that's going through the radiator. Because again, diesels don't operate very warm. When I get out of bed in the morning, I don't just hop up and start running. You know, I got my morning routine. Get up, get in the shower, all that fun jazz. Get the, get your, get the blood flowing. You know, things are, you know, the older you get, the uh, the more time you need before you're in operating condition. And a tractor really is no different. I mean, again, diesel engines are meant to be abused. They're, you know, they're very hardworking engines, but they need to get some heat into them to make them, um, I guess, not wear out, any premature wear, and uh, to get that thicker viscosity oil into the engine there. So um, just take five minutes, let it warm up, but um, and a block heater is gonna help out a lot with getting the block somewhat warm. So really all you're trying to do is get some fluid uh, filtering there through the hydrostatic transmission, at least on this specific tractor. They do talk about when you're done putting it to work outside, let it run down just a little bit. So you can crank her back down to 1500 RPMs, or a little bit below that for just a little bit to help cool down the engine a little bit so it's not like a drastic shock when it's shut off. So you get a little bit more of a, um, I guess they're calling it a, a gradual cool down, you know, because temperature shocks are hard on a lot of things. So gradual cooling and gradual heating ideally are the best. So after about 15 minutes, let's see where we're at. 50 degrees. So we've came up 51. We've came about 10 degrees up on the block temp just in that short amount of time. So that's quite a bit different. Again, this is right around where the plug is at. So let's go back here. 50 degrees. So we got up about, you know, 10 degrees there on the block. Let's check the, the old radiator. It's reading the same because it's not getting any fluid pumped through it. Let's go over here to this side, check this side of the block. It hasn't got a whole lot warmer yet. Let's get down here in this bottom part. Yeah, it's not a whole lot warmer yet. Let's uh, give it another few minutes, get from the water pump. Yeah, nothing's not different on this side. So let's uh, give her a few more minutes here. We get a little bit of heat up in the top of the engine, but let's give it a few more minutes and see what we get. So after 30 minutes, let's see what we got. Oh, about uh, right next to it. We're seeing about 66 degrees. That's right next to the heater. But a little farther forward on the block, we're seeing about 50. 
56 ish somewhere in that area so it obviously helped quite a bit 10 degrees Let's check this side probably gonna see a lot less increase so yeah it looks like we brought the block temp up a few degrees overall get back in there but yeah, I'd say I'd say it helped. Let me know if you guys have any feedback on this topic. Do you guys have block heaters? Do you use them all the time? Do you usually park your tractors inside or do you leave them outside, plug them in, or do you even plug them in at all? Are you concerned about it? Have you had any issues? I'd be curious. Let me know down here in the comments below what you guys uh, feel about the situation. I mean, again, it is controversial sometimes, um, but again, a majority of the time, especially with these newer tractors, they're gonna start okay if you have the right fuel on them, but it's a matter of, do you like to be a little nicer to your tractor? Do you like to keep things warmer? Do you like to prevent issues? It's all for grabs in this situation. So again, put me your comments down below. What do you guys do? Do you deal with it? And uh, we'll go from there. So to kind of close things up today, you guys will see that that block heater does make a pretty good difference in the block temperature. Um, again, I can't get, advise you on how to install that because I haven't done it myself. But I'm guessing if you can take the frost plug out and get the right um, block here yourself, it doesn't look that bad to do. I have also seen other tractors will do well, sim similar to this where they will just put a um, in radiator hose one, basically that's in line with the, the radiator hose. They'll splice it in there and uh, get the coolant warmed up to warm the block up as well. Hope you guys kind of found this informative. I know some people don't have tractors like this or don't have any tractors at all or aren't used to living in cold weather and don't know what to expect. Again, keep in mind if, if you don't know Look in your owner's manual, It'll give you some guidance on cold weather starting and cold weather running. An extra five minutes isn't gonna hurt nothing and it lets the, you know, the tractor's fluids get up and running in the tractor there and you don't have to worry about that then, right? I mean, I, I know they'll say those diesel generators, they'll hop up and just run, but a lot of those are gonna have heaters on them um, that'll keep them warm up here in the Midwest because again, it's gonna get awfully cold out and the diesel end is not gonna like starting. It's just good practice if you can to let it warm up a little bit before you run it. And in this instance, I, it's not very often I'm gonna plug it in when it's in the garage. Like I said, it's about 45 degrees in here, 43, whatever you wanna call it. Depending upon where you check things, uh, the thermostat set at 45. So anyways, you can see I got a you know a 15 degree rise there in about a half hour, in about 15 minutes. You know, I saw a pretty good rise there, so maybe 15 minutes is enough. You know, an extra 15 minutes, what's it gonna hurt if I have to go 30? Um, but again, where the block heater's gonna become more critical is if you're leaving your tractor outside in more exposed elements, or even in inside your garage where it isn't insulated and it's not heated. You know, the extra bit of heat's gonna help quite a bit. Obviously, you're gonna expect to see, hopefully, you know, if you leave it long, if it's if it's 20 degrees outside and you plug it in, um, you should expect to get to a relatively warm temperature like we're seeing today. It may take a little longer, depending upon how cold things are, but set you up for success. These things will start when it's cold. I've had this tractor outside running at negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, I've never had an issue with it, uh, I guess, running or staying running. Also, I've never had to start outside when it's that cold. I'd be a little reluctant to just because that is difficult to, you know, negative 30 is pretty worst case here in the Midwest. And we, we do get a little bit colder than that, but that's that's pretty cold for us. Again, keeping the fuel mixed, we're not going to cover that in this video, but keeping the fuel in the right conditions was important really for running in cold temperatures. But in the owner's manual there, it did talk about um, if you need to, you could add a basically a dampener in the front of your uh radiator there to make sure you're not getting too much airflow and keeping the engine cool because it does need to run at an operating temperature to, to really run correctly. I could have probably benefited from that in the past and maybe I will look into that in the future here but um, you know running for about 20 minutes you'll see that it comes off the cold so I, it's probably not an optimal running conditions but it isn't a cold engine by any means and uh, when I get back in the garage there is quite a bit of you know heat coming off the motor so Hopefully you guys found this informative and helpful on block heaters and how maybe you could expect one to be located on this tractor. Um, the performance you could see uh, by plugging one in and how long it could take to get to a operating temp and maybe try to understand if this is right for you. Again, if you guys don't live in a super cold climate, block heaters may not be something you wanna worry about, um, but it is kind of a nice thing to do here if you wanna make sure your tractor is gonna last as long as possible. And realistically, I'm never in a hurry anyways, so if I have to start it up, pull it outside and let it sit for 15 minutes or so to kind of get some heat in the engine and I'll do that. Um, I'm not worried about it and like I said, a warmed up engine is a happy engine. You don't want to start up and just go out there and hammer it right away. People do it, go for it if you want to, but you could 
potentially damage some stuff. And it's, it's just it's just ideal if you can let things warm up a little bit and get some fluid running. To be honest, I've only used a block heater once or twice, and I didn't really see a huge starting performance. So I just went ahead with just starting it and pulling it outside um, to make sure you know I let the engine get a little bit of heat into it before it runs. Just best practice, and that's my opinion. So. Hope you guys found this video informative. If you guys did like the video, give me a thumbs up. That's much appreciated. If you guys made it this far in the video, you must like something I'm doing, whether it's outdoor related, tractor related, any of that fun stuff. If you would hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate that. You guys can follow along here on the K6 Outdoors YouTube family. And if you're so inclined, hit that bell next to it and it'll give you notifications when I post more videos like this in the future so you can check them out right away. I'm gonna put some links below for like the infrared thermometer and maybe some similar block heaters if I can find some. Just keep in mind, those are Amazon affiliate links. They're of no expense to you, and it's something Amazon pays out to their affiliate members as part of, uh, I guess, getting you there for the transaction. So let me know if you have any feedback in the video. Put that down there in the comments below. I love uh, talking with all of you. It's, uh, I guess, one of the more rewarding parts of doing this is helping some people out and answering questions that I can. Like always, I'll catch you in the next video. My name's Kyle. I'll see ya.